What's up, everyone? What's up? Welcome to another great, and we're almost closing out this entire thing of fundamentals um, here on One Faith. I am your boy, T. We have my host, my brother from another mother and father, <laughs> but we speak <laughs> Heavenly Father. He is rocking the Chicago beanie. I don't know if he's from <laughs> Chicago at all, but... <laughs> <laughs> His, his neck and thinned oh. out. His neck and thinned out. Mine's trying to thin out. <laughs> we, 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 we celebrate the awesome, the magnificent, the wonderful, the majestic, Cut the mighty out. and wonderful, <laughs> the illustrious, <laughs> the right reverend himself, Marcus King with us. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How y'all doing out there, peeps? It's What's good to up? be on another episode. We're closing this thing out, man. I've been having so much fun learning about the fundamentals of uh, being a Christian, man. It's just good to co-host with my brother, the man, the myth, the legend, the archbishop <laughs> himself. Okay. You know, it's nothing that he's going to do. Because I had to return the favor, you know? It's nothing. You see how he's rocking the bishop chains, you know what I mean? Bishop two chains. Bishop two chains. Yeah, I, I, I'll take that. Bishop two chains. Bishop two chains. Let me stop. <laughs> But, you know, tonight we have a very special guest with us. Uh, we have um, an amazing, he's a friend to the podcast, y'all. You know, yes, sir. He, he is no stranger. This is our brother. Um, man, we, we appreciate him for being here with us for the past couple of weeks. I mean, I know that we didn't go live last week and we apologize for that. We sincerely apologize for that. But uh, everybody had scheduling conflicts last week and things came up, things happened. But it seemed like the Lord kind of orchestrated and moved things around so that we all could be together today. So with that being said, you know, we truly thank God for having the chief apostle, Bishop Elect. <laughs> the right <laughs> reverend <Where's> himself, <laughs> Mark Rice Jr. How you doing, bro? What's up, fellas? Y'all, please don't. Did he put that on the ticker? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, please don't pay this man no mind. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, What's yeah, going man. on, fellas? Man, not What's much, man. On? Not much. We excited to have you here with us, man, because. You know, we we just thank God you took time out of your busy day, your touring schedule. You know, we know you you got so many people to bless, babies to uh, to to baptize, and you know you just got so much to do. But we thank God that you took time to just spend just a few minutes. Yes, sir. <laughs> you are, bro. Little old us here at One Faith. <laughs> you are, sir. And you no, know, man. Listen, I am honored, thankful, man. And be humble uh, and humble, man, to be uh, with y'all tonight, man. Y'all are some of the coolest brothers I know, man. Some of the most anointed brothers I know. Um, I love what you guys are doing with One Faith. I love that you guys have been spending the last few months talking about uh, the fundamentals, man. I feel like sometimes in the church we can get away from that. You know, we kind of get, you know, start. We kind of get hyped up on the other stuff, on the emotional things and the and the the, the, the shouting and the things, which are all great. But sometimes we got to just go back and we have to go back to uh, to understand what it is we believe, man. You know, yep. there's a lot of times of what it is we believe and not just doing things um, out of routine, you know. And so I'm excited that you guys have been have been doing this, been doing a series. Exactly. Man, this is actually, um, you know, a, a God given series, man. And I remember, you know, we talked about this months ago before we even started the, the fundamental series, you know, me, Marcus mm-hmm. and Mark. You know, when the Lord laid it on my heart, you know, I, I expressed it to my brothers, had to run it by them first. <laughs> and a lot of what you saw out of this series, you know, those who've been, you know, following the the podcast, following the series, um, you know, everything that came out of this series came from the inspiration of these two uh, wonderful, wonderful and awesome men of God. And I just thank God for them because, you know, when we started this thing off. We said, we're going to talk about the fundamentals. We're going to really dive deep because I wanted to make sure that we can discuss these things on that basic level. But at the same time, you know, I've seen how God has been able to just use this, this platform, use what we're doing to really bless a lot of people. You know, I know know people, they look at, you know, ratings, they look at viewers and all this other stuff, but you know, you don't know who's watching after, you know, we, we go Correct. off after we're not live anymore. You don't even know 
who's paying attention. And then even when we're sharing out our stuff, our content on social media, it touches thousands of people. I'm not lying. You know, you can go and look at our, our views on some of the things. It touches thousands of people. And yeah. so because of that, you know, you never know what we're sharing, what we're saying, you know, who it impacts and who it bless. And I just truly thank God that we're, we've we been able to do that in this season with fundamentals because this series, man, is, is something that I feel like God has really wanted us, the people of God, to really get back to, especially as you journey into this next season of life post-COVID. You know, COVID ain't over yet. It's almost COVID. over. But, you know, as we transition back into things that we thought were normal. You know, you get some people's understand on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you know, a lot of people have to go back and revisit, you know, some of those things that we 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 thought we knew that were fundamental principles, but we may have uncovered during the series. And if you go back and listen to it and watch it, you know, you'll find out, oh, some of this stuff was man-made. <laughs> some of this stuff on Bible. Right. So, you know, that's what this series was all about. This is not... I know there's a big movement. The de- deconstruction movement is going along, going on. That that movement in and of itself is uh, bathed in, um, I would say, unreligious and really um, non fundamental core things. It's just really going back to kind of deconstructing and reconstructing what the Bible is saying to put in what they want to say. But what our whole intent is to really get down to the basic fundamental levels of what. The Bible is talking about on these core issues. Um, who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Ghost? Why do we um, shout? Why do we do this? Why do we pray? That, that was the, um, the a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago we with Pastor Hawkins. Shout out to Pastor Hawkins and Refuge Church in Greensboro. And thank you for opening up your doors and allowing us to um, have our One Faith Live event there. But we had, you know, we talked about the fundamentals of prayer, all of these different things. And tonight we're talking about the fundamentals of worship. And so I know a lot of people are like, man, worship is like so, so many different things, but we're really going to get on the basic level of worship. You know, there are so many different layers to worship. And we kind of alluded to it the other night uh, when we were with Pastor Hawkins and with uh, Minister Montana. So we were talking about prayer, you know, you have and how my, the uh, minister. So he gave a great illustration of prayer. You have the inner courts. The outer courts, the inner courts, and then you have the the, the holy of holies. Yeah. And so, worship in and of it, in, in in that sense, falls along those lines as well. And so, we have my bro here tonight. This is one of his favorite topics. He loves talking about about worship. That's why we're bringing him on. And then, quick plug for next week. Next week, we're actually going to have Marcus's pastor, his his great man of God. He's going to be yeah. with us next week. And it's going to be good. We're going to talk about heaven. We're going to talk about hell. We're going to talk about es- eschatology. We're going to talk about it all. Why? Because we need to get down to the basic fundamental level <laughs> of all of these things. So with that being said, Marcus, do you want to add anything? Absolutely. Um, every I echo everything my brother just said. It is important to understand the basics simply because. Um, I believe, and this is just my honest opinion, I believe we've lost a lot of people by being too deep and not Mm. expressing who Christ is and how things are supposed to operate. I think we got outside of the basics so much because we're trying to uh, impress the who's who, if you will, instead of doing the outreach that is needed because there are so many people that are in need of Jesus. They're in need of hope. They're looking for hope. But when you become too fancy or when you're explaining things that is not really resonating with the soul or things that you have to deal with in your everyday life, how do you deal with it as a Christian? Then you begin to lose people. So I think uh, this series, if you go back from beginning to end, you'll see why we do what we do and how it gets us through pretty much. Um, And it's important to understand that as believers, we're not just doing something uh, just because Uh, this is not a a trend that we're trying to tag along with. No, we believe in uh, Christ. We believe in what he did and why he did it. And it was so important for um, human human life. It was important for each and every individual uh, Mm -hmm. in this world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So everybody has an opportunity 
at, at following Christ and believing in Christ. And what we did was we broke it down, the different things that come with it. So I, I, I think, like my brother's been saying, you know, it's very important that even when we go back to, you know, doing what we're doing, we don't go back to how it used to be, but we right. progress. You know what I mean? We're progressing and, and it's not church as usual. It's it's going after God's presence. You know what I mean? Uh, because that's what we've learned in, in the basics. You know what I mean? It's going after God and how we can sharpen each other. You know, how can we make each other better? How can we be accountable to one another with these basics and, and, and unity? We can't lose. That's all I have to say, bro. You mute your, uh, the mic is muted. muted I, I didn't even mute. I didn't. I didn't know how to word a mute. I didn't even. <laughs> I'm over here just preaching and just congratulating all that good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> all right, Reverend, right, Reverend, Chief Apostle. <clears throat> Come on, man. We're gonna we're gonna kick it to you. We're gonna kick it to you right now. Yes, sir. What is worship? So, what is worship? So. Here's the thing, and I'm not going to go through this this whole entire spiel, but um, before we even kind of go into what it is, I think it's important that we talk about why we should learn about it. Come on. Because, because a lot of times we hear things in church, we hear about worship, we hear about praise, we hear about uh, a prayer. You know, your grandmama told you to pray, you know, and, and we hear about tithing and we hear about these different things. And what happens is we, if we're not careful, then we'll kind of be doing things out of routine, right? We'll be kind of doing things out of habit. We'll do things, not necessarily understanding why it is that we're doing them. We're doing them just because so oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Why, why do you worship God? Cause I, cause I worship God. And uh, uh, why, 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 do you, why do you do it at church? Cause it's Sunday and that's what we do. And if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up on just the habit of actions that we actually yeah. don't even know what we're doing. Um, I, I use this as a, as a quick example because I, I posed the question, and I wouldn't even pose the question here on, online, but I posed the question. I was, I was teaching a class one day, and I asked the question to the class, and I said, I said, class, the class said, huh? I said, uh, who here worships God? Of course, everybody raised their hand, me, I do. I said, great. What's worship? Mm. Quiet. And the question then becomes, well, how are how do you worship God if you don't even know what it is? Wow. Moment. If you can't even give me an answer on what it is, then how do you say that it's something that you do? And so it kind of took me down this rabbit trail. And, and we want to learn about the reasons why uh, that we should actually even just learn about it before we even talk about it. Why? Well, number one is, is what we were created to do. Mm. Right. Is what we were created to do. Isaiah 43, 21. The people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. This is this is the word. This is what we were made to worship. And I think once we get that understanding, that when you realize that you are created and formed to worship, then you can get an understanding that you're worshiping, whether you realize it or not. Mm. We might not know what it is that you're worshiping. But if you were created to worship, you're going to worship. Right. Right. Another reason is because God doesn't want anything before him. Right. Right. He says he says, for you should not worship any other God. It says so for, Come on. Uh, Exodus 34 14. For you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. He's telling you, I can't have other gods before me. Jesus says you should only worship the Lord your God and him should you only serve. So mm -hmm. again, the reason why we got I, I'm I know I'm breaking it all the way down even before we start talking about it, because what happens is if we don't get an understanding of how important worship is, then we'll show no interest in actually doing it. That's right. good. Or we won't, right. If we don't have the understanding, if we don't understand the severity that this is what we this is what we were created to do. Let me let me help you for everybody here who just trying to make it to heaven. I just want to make it to heaven. Let's just make it to heaven. What you going to do? How are you going to get to heaven? Well. If you want to make it to heaven, guess what you're going to be doing when you get there? Exactly. <laughs> worship. <laughs> you're going to be worshiping. So if you're not a big fan of worship right now, heaven might not be for you. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you 
That is deep. Wait, that, that's not in my note. If you, <laughs> if you, if you not okay with worshiping now, heaven may not be what you want to. You might want to think about your options because that's mm-hmm. what we about to be doing for the rest of forever. Like we got again. I just want to break down before we even talk about what it is. Let's talk about again the importance of it, like how real this is. This is what we're gonna be. This is what they up there doing right now. It's angels right now. The, there's angels standing around his throne singing, "Holy, holy, holy, the Lord God Almighty." It says that it yeah. says that the elders they are laying down their crowns and worshiping God. This is what they're doing. They are holding it down because it's important to God. Mm. It is important to God. And if we don't understand how important it is, and this is what we created for, the purpose, like we want to talk about purpose, why am I here? That's the first thing that we were created for, yep. is to worship. And the last thing, and, I, and I'm going to go into what is it, the last thing I want to talk about why we should actually be trying to learn about it, and this is, this is a big, big one, and I don't know, church people guard your toes, is that so we are not just assuming that we're worshiping God. Hmm. the worst the only thing that's worse than giving somebody what they don't want is giving somebody what they don't want thinking that they want it (laughs) that's the only thing you ever somebody just gave you a gift and you was like oh thank you (laughs) right (laughs) somebody gave you a gift and it's just like why did you think I wanted this Right. Mm. Like, and then uh, I'm going to get to that later, but let's not even talk about it just being like your leftover gifts and stuff that around the house that you don't even use and you just giving me what you can find. You're not giving me your best. You're giving me what you can find. And so we're not just assuming that we're worshiping God. The Bible right. says that wisdom is the principal thing. It's, 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 the, it's the principal thing. It says in all of our getting, getting understanding. So right. in the first right. thing before we talk about what something is, let's talk about, again, how important it is. Yeah. It's so important. And the thing about it is many of us have relegated worship to the feeling that you get at church during praise and worship. Mm. Yeah, break we've that down. Relegated, we've relegated worship to emotion. I'm about to go into worship. Here I am to worship. And the tears is coming. Oh, yeah, they worshiping. They going in right now. Mm-hmm. Are you worshiping or are they being emotional? Mm-hmm. Are they are they worshiping? Or are they just are they just an emotional person? We don't. Because we talk about worship. Uh, well, worship is, what is worship? Well, worship is when you sing. Okay. What is worship? Worship is when you dance. Okay. What is worship? Worship is when you get the little goosey bumps, you know, because now you're in the presence of the Lord. So I got to be worshiped because I feel all of these things. And the, the, the whole thing, what really kind of took me down this trail and I got, I hope, listen, y'all please stay on this on this Facebook Live because we're going somewhere. The whole thing that took me down this rabbit hole was found in Genesis chapter 22. Mm-hmm. For those who may not be familiar, if you want to screen, somebody write that on the screen for me, write Genesis chapter 22 so y'all can keep, so y'all can uh, share this. And I want you to go look at it for yourself so you don't think I'm making it up. We're going to be in the book. I'm giving y'all all, all Bible tonight. Is that there's a man by the name of Abraham. Many people, if you grew up in church or if you had any, any kind of church background or you heard, you, you, you know about Abraham, our father of faith. Y'all, y'all remember him in children's church? Father Abraham mm-hmm. had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them. <laughs> and so were you. So let's just pray the <laughs> Lord. Right arm. Okay. So, <laughs> so there was a man named Abraham and he gets this promise from God, this mm-hmm. son named Isaac. This is in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 7, for those that are watching. He gets a son named, am I chopping or am I good? Am I good? I'm good, okay. You good. Okay. And the Bible says 
that Ab- that God calls to Abraham and says, Abraham, sacrifice your son. Your only son whom you love. So Isaac, this promised child, something that you waited for, something that you believe God for, something that God blessed you with, something that is that that is is directly from your loins, something that you knew God gave you, you can't take it. God gave me Isaac. And God says, okay, take him to this mountain, sacrifice him, kill your son. The Bible says that Abraham and Isaac and servants are going up, they get to the bottom of the hill and he tells the servants, he says, you guys wait here. Me and the boy are going to worship. No, you got to catch this. Let me make sure. I, I, I need y'all to see this. Let me make sure I, I got it right. Because I don't want y'all. Like, y'all, TJ, y'all get this boy in here. He ain't, he ain't even in the Bible. He ain't reading no Bible. Okay. Genesis chapter 22, verse number five. It says, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and we will come back to you. Now, here's my issue. My issue is, where's the band? Mm-hmm. Where's the dance team? Right. Where's the where's the flaggers? Where where where's the goosey bumps? Where's the emotional feelings? Like I just can't picture Abraham walking about to kill my son. About to right. kill my son. You know what I'm saying? I just right. don't I don't see him making beautiful music. Right. Yet it was called worship. That he was about to kill his son. And it was called worship. Worship. So I want somebody to write this on the screen for me. Worship is not a moment. Worship is not a song. Worship is not a feeling. It's a lifestyle. The lifestyle. It is not a moment. Woo! It's not a song. Yes, sir. It's not a feeling. It is a That's lifestyle. Sorry. You don't go into worship. Uh oh. You live worship. Yeah. You don't. You. That's good, man. I, I want y'all to hear me. It is a life. It is something that you live. And the reason why I said it, it's it's that singing isn't worship. I'm, I'm gonna break this down. I'm a, am, I, am, I, am I okay? Y'all all right? Everybody good? The reason why I'm saying that, because you're like, well, well, singing is worship. So here's now listen to what I'm saying. Is singing worship or is it a style of worship? An expression. Come on here. Come on. Right. Come is on. it is it is dancing worship or is it a form of worship? Is it a style or expression of worship? And mm-hmm. I need y'all. I, I need you to see this. I need you to see this. Because let me give an example. If I ask you, if I ask TJ, if I say, TJ, what is a sandwich? TJ would not respond, peanut butter and jelly. I sure ain't. <laughs> I hope not. He wouldn't <laughs> say turkey. Damn. Sure ain't. Sandwich, peanut butter and jelly, they are styles. They are forms. They are expression of sandwich. A sandwich is two pieces of bread with something in the middle, which means a sandwich is a sandwich. No matter how you do it, it's a sandwich. If it's peanut butter and jelly, if it's tuna, it is a sandwich. If you're vegan and it's lettuce and tofu, it is a sandwich. Worship is worship. Right. No matter how you style it, no matter how you dress it up, what it is, is what it is. So I'm about to give this to somebody. The first thing I need to say is, what is a response? A response is a response is something that you give back because of something that has happened. There's a response that comes when you stump your toe at the bottom of the bed. Now, I don't care how saved you are. You might not want a lot of people to know what the response is when you stomp your soul at the bottom of the bed, but it comes with the response. 
Come on. Mine usually come with hand gestures. Like, that's, <laughs> well, my, it's a response. I mean, <laughs> right? TJ, right now, somebody we were talking about earlier. Right now, I'm asking a real question. TJ, somebody, you in, you in Walmart, somebody walk up to you, give you a million dollars and walk away. What's your response? Hey, Shondo. Let me stop. It's a response. Marcus, right. you going Marcus, you going to the gas station, you going to grab a honey bun. Well, you're a personal child, you don't eat honey buns. But let's say when you used to eat honey buns and you was going in and you was getting a honey bun and somebody came and jumped in your car while you was in the gas station. You got a response? Mm, I can't say that loud. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a response. There is yes, something sir. that comes on the other end of what yeah. happens. Mm. A response is something that comes on the Work other month. end of what happens. So everybody write this definition down. This is the, this is my definition for y'all. And the Sean, Vernell, Omar, this is my definition for everybody. Worship, and I'm, I'm going to write this down. Worship is the way that I show my love to God as a response to what he's done for me. That's good. I'm going to say it again for those taking notes. Worship is the way that I show, not your grandmama, not your auntie, not your cousin. Okay? Worship is the way that I show my love to God as a response to what he has done for me. Right. Worship is a response. Now, somebody got to catch this. Somebody has to catch this. Worship is a response. Well, Mark, I was with you until you said that because of what he's done for you. Because you're supposed to worship him for who he is. You don't just worship him for what he's done. Well, the only way you can worship him for who he is is based on what he's done. Come here. <laughs> I'm here. Come on. Bro. You don't you don't worship him for being your provider unless he's a provider for you. You don't know him as a healer unless you don't know him to do some healing. Come on. You don't you don't worship him. God is a way maker. How you know that if you always had your if you worshiping God for being a healer, but you've never been sick, how you know? Mm. I I'm just saying, if 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 you if you have not necessarily went through it and you don't know him to that degree, if you've never been lonely and, and, and God was and God was the only one that you could talk to and you worshiping him for being there when nobody was with you and you worshiping him for being for being Jehovah Shammah, the God that is there. How you know that unless he was there? Mm. So you're worshiping him as a response. And so the reason why this is important, because this that revelation. It's going to help you push past your feelings. Right. Exactly. I need y'all to catch this. That revelation is going to help you push past your feelings. Because when you got a bad day, when you're having a bad day, come on, Mark. That, don't, that don't change what he did for you. Come on. Come on Mark. When, when I'm having a rough day, it don't change the fact that he, that he saved my life. Mm. When my car break down, it don't, I still worship. I, I'm going to still find a way to worship him because it don't change the fact that he gave me a car because I know what it's like not to have one. Come on, Mark. See, the problem is many of y'all, many of us don't need, uh oh, many of us don't need a new blessing. Many of us need a better memory. Woo. Listen to me. Many of us don't need a new blessing. We just want God to, I just need one more blessing. God, would you just bless me? God, would you send it? Many of us don't need a new blessing. Many of us need a better memory. Because if you really think back, if you really think back on what God has done for you up until this point, like, and I don't mean, I don't mean your Facebook version. I don't, I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean your filter version. I mean the real, I mean what God did for the real you. The, 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 the you that don't know, like no, you behind closed doors. If you really thought about that and your memory went to that, there's no way you could not respond. Thank you, Jesus. Thank there's you. There's no way you could, when you don't feel like it, 
when the mm. when when the money don't sound right, when the money ain't right, when you when your car messing up, when the people at your job tripping, we let feelings affect our worship. Mm. But when you realize that worship is my response, it is my Work. response. It is Work. my it is my response Work. that when I really understand what God did for me for real, then no matter what my situation look like, it's it's not going to hinder my worship. Come on. Is there is is, is everybody okay? Is everybody all right? That no, nah, that's clear, bro, because you know, I I was sitting over here just taking a couple notes, you know, just <laughs> because you know, we have the the chief apostle bishop and I added one other chief worship instructor Mark, Mark <laughs> with us right, the whole going through. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I I I thank God because you know one thing that came to mind when you were talking was that we basically have to deny ourselves we have to deny our flesh. On, we have to deny our feelings in order to worship God because, mm-hmm. you know, so many times, like even, and this is why, yeah, I'm going to go there. This is why going to church is so important. Going mm-hmm. to church is important because you have to deny everything that you're feeling at every one, every voice and everything that's telling you not to go. Correct. And you have to deny that in order to be in the presence of God. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not attacking anyone who who has their churches closed or anything like that. I'm just saying you have to deny yourself in order for you to be in the presence of God and to truly I would say embrace the fullness of who God is. Because the moment that you go into church and you and you dealing with some things and you allow those things to really hinder you or to you allow those things to take more precedence over you actually mm-hmm. getting into worship in, at church or getting into the service, then you mm-hmm. have now placed your issue and your problem, whatever it is, above God. Mm-hmm. And you don't think that God is big enough to solve it. Mm-hmm. But the truth of the matter mm-hmm. is, if you are saved, <laughs> and if you are saved enough to the point where you are able to take your burden, take your problem, take your issue, and literally lay it down, not at the altar, lay it down at the door before you walk in mm-hmm. and just deny that feeling and just get lost in the presence of God. Every single time that I've done that and I've I've gone into the presence, I've gone into church and, and just experienced that pure, authentic worship. It's like a weight has been lifted. It's like Absolutely. God lets me know that that thing that you're worrying about you don't have to worry about it no more. That Correct. issue that you're that you're stressing over, you don't have to stress over it anymore. Why? Because I'm bigger than that. Whatever mm-hmm. it is that you need is wrapped up in me. Mm-hmm. And so and that's what that's what I'm getting out of this. Because mm-hmm. for us, we look at worship as just like you said, and, and we confuse worship. And this is something that that um that Minister So said last week, we confuse spiritualism with emotionalism. We confuse worship with being emotional. You know, yes, you can feel emotions. Yes, you can. I'm not, I'm not delimiting that and or saying that you should be emotional during your worship. But sometimes you can confuse those feelings and think that, oh, well, I'm worshiping God because I cried. No, Mm -hmm. you worshiping God because of what he's done for you. Mm-hmm. And when you thought about that, what he did for you, it triggered, that's the word, it triggered a memory. It exactly. triggered something in you and it brought something up out of you to make you think about the goodness of God and how mm-hmm. he's been able to keep you from that, that memory or from that thing that you're thinking about. And as a, and I, like Pastor Mark said, as a response, your worship is you may cry in a moment. You may lift exactly. up your hands and worship in that moment, or you may do like a lot of people do. They may start shouting. They may start screaming. Something like you know, you don't, you don't know. But there is that real quick. I'm going to hit that, that real quick. For Go ahead. All church people in the room. For all church people in the room. That's why y'all need to quit. Keep your, that's why you need to keep your mouth off people 
and and judging people worship. That's right. And I'll take all that. All where you don't know what they're responding to. You have no idea. When you look at somebody who run and scream, or you look at somebody who might just sit there and cry, you look at somebody if you don't know what they're responding to. You mm-hmm. get up and you see somebody run across the church. What if they're responding to the fact that at one point they couldn't run? Come on. What if God healed their legs and they could you don't think they deserve to run? That's their response. Man, this is heavy. That's, that's their response. You don't know what they're responding to. Like, like if, if if a girl just get up, she don't she don't know how to speak in tongues. She, if she, all she got is a scream, just get up. Ah, is she just scream? What if what if God delivered her from drugs and prostitution? Mm. And she don't know how to be churchy, and she don't know church protocol, but she knows how to respond. The, Man, you don't know what they're responding to. You don't know That's what they're. And see, the thing about worship mm. is it has to come from the heart. And it, can I let me piggyback ahead, off of that? Yeah. Because if if it's not safe for them to do it in the assembly, how are they going to win in life in worship? Cool. Correct. Come we on, have Mark. to like like he's like he's saying we have the assembly is supposed to be the safe place and piggybacking off with TJ where people can come in and let go and worship. Correct. And it's where we're supposed to exemplify it so that. They're equipped when you can't get to the church. Thank God that God, Jesus tore the veil. That's God, right. Where, where we got direct access now. So when That's you right. can't get to the church, wherever you are, you can just respond right there mm-hmm. and the peace will come right in. Your mm-hmm. direction comes right in. Your understanding comes right in. And this is what this is the importance of understanding what worship truly is. It is truly a lifestyle. It is truly something that we have to master as believers because mm-hmm. it's 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 one of those things that gives us the advantage when the world is chaotic, mm-hmm. when so many mm-hmm. things is going on at a time and we, we have no control of it. And all we can do is worship in the middle of a storm mm-hmm. when things are going crazy, when COVID hit and there was nothing that we can do. We had to find our place of worship. Mm-hmm. This is so important. This is so heavy. So uh, people of God, I, I please hear what's being said and understand mm-hmm. what true worship is, because this is how, as the song says, this is how we fight our battles. Correct. This is how we go through. This is how we're going to get through. This is understanding what true worship is. They that worship must worship me in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. This is the truth right here, man. Yeah. This is the truth. Go ahead, man. That's, that's, no, I'm just saying that that's so real, man, and that's so heavy. Um, and it one thing that nobody could take away from you is what God has done for you. Mm. That's why the old that's why the old saints would say you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Because in spite of despite of what what has coming out, what spirituality views or religious views or whatever, if you know you had an encounter with God. I don't care what the news say. Mm-hmm. Nobody can take away what he's done for me. You, yep. you, you see what I'm saying? Nobody can take away what he's done for me. What the news Jesus. is saying, what my friend is saying, what what, what, what everybody is saying. I, I got people right now who will tell you, Mark, I don't believe in what you believe. You know what? That's okay. If, if, that's, if you don't, it's okay. But I can't take away what he's done for me. And see, that's why it's so difficult when you when there's people who even want to walk away from the fact. If you've had an encounter, you Come cannot on. take. You cannot forget what he did for you mm. when you had nothing, and he gave you something. Despite of your doubt, despite of your fear, despite of what your friends say, you cannot replace the fact that I know when I called, he answered. Mm. I don't. I look. The facts don't add up. It doesn't make sense. Nope, I don't even know if I fully believe in creation. Nope, I don't even fully believe it. But the one thing I can tell you I do know is when I call, he answers. He answers. Mm. And and nobody could take that away. Nobody can take that away. And so it has to come from the heart. And that's why I was talking about authentic worship. You know, it has to come from the heart. Um, I'm reminded of, um, help me out, Lord, Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Mm-hmm. I want you to see this. 
Cain and Abel both offered something to God. Right. The Bible says, the Bible says that Cain gave some, and it says that Abel gave his first and his best. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he he did he looked on favor with and received Abel's gift. But upon Cain's gift, he did not look with favor. Why? Because he gave him his leftovers. Worship is when you're giving from your heart. See, that's why mm -hmm. you can walk into a room and one girl can sing and one girl can worship. Mm -hmm. And the one girl that can sing, vocal cords are amazing. She can sing the house down. She knows every key. She knows she she like. But the person that worship might hurt. She might even crack in her song, but it hits you different. Yeah, because one person is singing and one person is responding. Come on, Mark. <laughs> I want you. I want y'all to see this. That's why you can see people dance, and it's like, oh, that was nice. That was really good. That was really good. But then you see somebody else dance, and it's because one person can be dancing, and another person can be responding. One person, uh oh, can I can I come right into your pew? One person can be can be giving, and another person can be responding. Cause you can tithe with it from we can tithe with a bad attitude. Come on, and and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. So yeah, you can be obedient with a bad attitude, but my question is, was that worship? Mm -hmm. Because God received their gift. Now that's the that's what I love about Cain and Abel. The Bible doesn't say he rejected Cain's gift. It just didn't bring the same amount of favor that it did when it's Abel. Because mm -hmm. he accepted both, but he looked on favor on Abel because Abel gave him his best and it came from his heart. And worship cannot, I'm going to say that, I'm going to diss the part I just got to beat, beat in y'all head though, is that worship cannot be swayed by your feelings. Because mm. worship is the only, it's the one gift that you can give God. Woo! Come on. It's the only thing you can give God. <laughs> Thank because you. everything else, you got to think, everything else is for us. Us reading. Mm. What does God get out of us reading the Bible? Mm. He wrote it. He's the word. Right. Our prayer life is for us. So we can communicate. Come on. Let's go back to tithing. Even tithing. The word the word says, try, try me in this and see if I don't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out of blessing. Wow, so your tithing and your seed is even for you. Worship. Oh, I'm about to can I can I shake somebody theological tree right quick? Come on, oh, do man. it. Ooh. All right. Everybody <laughs> everybody everybody, everybody, everybody see it now, right? Everybody, everybody see everybody, this. Everybody take a seat. If you drive in, just pull over. Okay, here we go. It isn't worship if you're expecting something in return. Right. Wow. Listen to me. Right. Listen to me. Because right. if I'm giving authentically, if I'm giving God something, if I'm giving God a gift, a Minister. gift isn't a gift if I'm expecting something in return. Minister. I come up to Marcus for his birthday. I said, you know what, bro? You know, you my guy, man. Listen, I was at the store. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was up at the store, man. I seen this watch. You know, so I was like, oh, this look just like a Marcus watch. You know what I mean? And, and so I give it to you. He's just like, bro, this for me? I'm like, yeah, you know. And he's just like, wow, you didn't have to do that. I'm like, what? You know, I wanted to. You know, you my boy. And he's just like, man, I, I like, do you like it? I love it. I'm like, great. Okay, what you got me? Mm. Mm. Wow. That's not a gift. Wow. If I give you, uh-oh, here we go. Buckle, buckle up right here, church people. If I give you a gift and expect something in return, that's not a gift. That's a transaction. That's it. When you worship, I'm worshiping whether you give me something or not. That's Come it. On. Because I'm, I'm showing my love to you. I'm expressing my love to you. It is the way I express my love. And see, that's why, I, again, like I keep going to that, you got to watch the way you judge people worship. Like, especially, like I said, you know, when Christian hip hop became a thing and the way that the church did Kirk Franklin when he when he came out and all of this, mm -hmm. because his didn't sound like worship. 
Yep. But it was a response. And if I've been in the streets my whole life and and all I do is all I know is rap music and I start and, and the Lord gives me word for Christian hip hop, that's my response. Yep, it's my response. It is the way I show my love. It's the way I show I, my love. Do, 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 y'all, do y'all see what I'm saying? Romans, this is the scripture. And I'm, I know I'm just rambling. This is the scripture that we go to when we talk about worship. Y'all know our, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Like, this is what we always, this is what we say. And I really want to beat this response thing in y'all head. But I want y'all, I want y'all, I want y'all to catch this. I don't know what that was. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, or holy except once to God. It says, this is your true and proper worship. Now, we always preach to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I believe we should preach that. But I believe if we're not careful, we'll miss the A part. It says, in view of God's mercy, which means when you look at the mercy of God, when you view what God has done, Mm -hmm. then your response is to offer yourself. Mm. Hallelujah. I want you to see in view of God's mercy. It says, I therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, which means you can't worship for real unless you're looking, unless you view God's mercy, unless you say, Wow, look at all of this that he's done. Look at what he's kept me from. Look at his mercy. Look, look at then you respond in offering yourself. And let me say this too: offer your bodies. Offer is something, oh, come here. Offer is something that you do willingly. Mm. Yep. Now, why is that important? Because prior to Jesus in the Old Testament covenant, they didn't have a choice if they would worship. They right. had to worship. Right. Come on, bro. It was Come a on. mandate. Come I want on. y'all to see this. Back right. in the Old Testament children of Israel times, it was a mandate for them to worship. But God gives us choice. Come on. God says we are to worship him, but we're not like we're not about to get killed. <laughs> we're not about to get stoned to death if we don't worship. Mm-hmm. Right. So that means that the worship has to come from a heart level and it, it has to come from an authentic. It has to be authentic. Amen. It has to be authentic. Be, just because your grandmama shouted in spoken tongues don't necessarily mean that that might be your expression. That's right. right. Because your response is your response. Like, it got to come from the heart. Oh, my gosh. The, these people, these people honor me with their lips. Mm. But their heart is far from me. Mm. So I can Jesus. sing and preach mm. and dance and my heart be far. Far. Be far. That's not worship. When I, I've seen my wife going to worship. I've seen my wife worship and she sings her expression is through song and she can't even, she started thinking about God and can't even finish the song she's singing on stage. Somebody got to pick up the mic and, and, and fill in. Mm-hmm. I done got to the point where I see her about to go in. I start praying, God, let her finish the song. Cause it, <laughs> cause it's worship. It, it do something when you, again, but cool. the problem is we want to worship based on, ah, uh, we want to we want to we want to worship and we want to express things based on where you at now. Mm. But worship because what it could have been. Wow. Worship because what it could have been. Again, not your edited story. I ain't talking about your Facebook. I ain't talking about your profile. What you want everybody to know. I'm talking about your real story. Like your real story. It's where your worship is going to come from. Because that's the unedited version. <laughs> that's, the, that's the true uncut version. That's the well, true uncut pure, version. The pure uncut version. The pure uncut version. Mm. Marcus, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I was, I was trying to shut my trap. because I, Bro, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this because uh, people of God 
please hear what he keeps saying. It's a response. The response is so important. And I think he's hitting on it on the head so much because so many people are even moved by influence. Mm-hmm. When someone of great influence walks in the room and they get emotional, you don't realize your response is not to God, but your response is to the influence that's in the room. That's right. And that is yeah. not healthy. That's not good. And that's not God. Because it, 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 it kind of worked out because minister so hit that last week as my brother stated Mm -hmm. he hit that last week you can get to a point where a person can work the room and -hmm. you're responding to the flow of it like a person that uh that's no different than a rapper if you watch i used to rap i still sometimes watch rap battles (laughs) yeah every now and then let's i'm just being real but every now and then you see rap battles and you're like oh that flow was good and you can get hype off of that and they're they're worshiping they're responding to something that sounds good. But the truth of the matter is when you truly know who God is, and I say that a lot before I start my prayers, when I'm intercessing on, on, online, I said, I know the God that I serve. We serve a big God, literally a big God, because I'm not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to be where I am. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make no sense. I should be addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. I should have so many babies out of wet life. I should be hey, just out of my mind. You're but it was because of, and, and when I think about that, so that's why you see me shaking my head. That's why you see me going and waving my hand because I know, I know what God did for me. And All you right. have to know what God has done for you. And if you don't know, you're watching this right now for a reason. Because God brought you to this, whether you're watching on YouTube, and I don't mean to preach, but I'm preaching. And whether he brought you on YouTube or Facebook, God has brought you to this because he's bringing you out of something or has brought you out of something. And he's Mm -hmm. giving you an opportunity to respond so that you can you can go where you need to be, because where Mm -hmm. you are is not permanent. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Where you are is not permanent. But your worship, when you get before God. When you get in his presence and you truly respond to him, he'll get you to where you need to be and you'll feel whole. You won't need nobody else to, to tell you who you are. You'll mm-hmm. feel purposed. You won't need anybody else to tell you your purpose. You'll walk as a child of God. I'm just I, I, I'm appreciating my brother Mark right now because he has no idea. He's breaking so many different chains in the minds of people. And yep. this is what why we do what we do, because there has been so many boundaries within the Correct. mind. There has been so many boundaries of what worship is. If I don't sing good enough or if I don't play the drums, or if I don't play the organ or if I can't preach, I, I'm not a good worship. But that's the de- the devil is a liar. Come on. That's, that's, a, that's a talent. That's a talent that people can perfect. Very good. Very good. That's a talent the that call people of the can what perfect. I yep. But uh, worship is clearly nothing more but a response to who God is. Correct. That's all I have to say, bro. Correct. And I and I think what you're saying, and I and I don't want to. I know where we at on time. Where we at on? Yeah, about five minutes. Give me. Okay. Can I work? Can I work? Can I work three and a half of them? Go ahead. All right, let me work three and a half of them just so I can give y'all because I know we're doing a lot about this and I was just like, this isn't worship, this is a worship, whatever. So somebody on here might be wondering, okay, well, I, okay, I like your hoodie, but what in the world? So how do I worship? And so let me just give this definition really quick. I want I want to show you guys this because um, when you look at, I know when I said the way I show my love, so another word could be, and Marcus said earlier, is express. He said the way I express, the way I express it. So look at the definition. This ain't even deep. Look at the definition of express, and we're going to find our three points, and I'm out your way. The definition of express is so when you express your love, right? We're talking about expressing love to God as a response. So the definition of express, it says to convey a thought or a feeling, which our thought and our feeling is love. So we're going to tie that. So to convey love in words or by gestures or by conduct. Hmm. Everybody put that on the screen. Put by words by gestures or conduct it is words gestures and conduct so when i want to worship god and i want to express love i can express my love to him by words by Mm -hmm. gestures 
by conduct. When I express my love to him by words. And again, it got to come from the heart. I'm not saying it out of routine. And I heard, and I, because I heard my pastor say it. I'm saying this because I know him. I'm expressing my love. God, I love you. God, there's nobody like you. I don't know where I will be without you, God. Father, if it was not for you, God, I would still be out here on these streets. Father, God, you kept me. You're expressing love to him with your words. Yes. You're offering it from your heart. It ain't just routine. That's, and that's why I said you can't worship him for being a provider if you don't even know, if you don't believe he provided for you. Mm. You can't you can't okay. worship him for being a God that sustains when you don't think he's holding you up. When that's you good. realize that everything I have comes from him, man, I'm telling you, it, it'll change the game. Gestures. See, this is where your dancing and your stuff comes in. This is when you Come get on. people running. This is when you get people shouting. Them. But again, if it's not from the heart, it's not worship. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. If it's not from the heart, it's not worship. So if I'm running and this is my gesture and I'm lifting my hands and I'm crying and I'm clapping and I'm celebrating and I don't really got a lot of words because the, because let everything that have breath praise the Lord, like the true worshipers, the true worshipers worship in spirit and truth, which means I can worship in spirit and truth and not use words. Mm. That's on. right. Because it's words or gestures or or conduct. So so I could literally be worshiping, crying. Marcus was shaking his head earlier. That's a gesture. We but see, we think it could just be we think it could just be a, a, a church movement, but we don't know what Marcus is responding to. Right. So if, so if all I got again, if I don't know the church lingo, if if, if I don't know the church lingo, and this is all I got. You don't got to know what it means. God does. Right. Cool. You My don't, God. You don't have to know. If, if you're sitting there, you see people just hold, they don't, and they just hold their heart. You don't have to be worried about, why they over there just holding their heart? They gotta, you don't know what they're, they might not have that. But God receives that as a, as a, as a gesture. Yes, That's why. Lord. It, whatsoever you do, whether you eat, drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. That it's right. a gesture. It is about Him. As long as it's about Him and not you, yeah. your worship cannot be about you. Listen, if it's not from the heart, it's not worship. And I want to just bring this. I got, I got one, one and a half more minute left. I got to bring this because I, I don't want nobody to leave without this. If it's not from the heart, it's not worship. And if it's about you, it's not worship. Not worship. Mm. If it is about you, if any of the, if, if you are doing the gesture and it is Jesus. about you, it is not worship. Because it's what I give God. It's my response. It's my expression of love to him. It is by my gesture. And then this last one, and we don't want to talk about this, but this last one is conduct. Mm. The way I live can be worship to God. That's good. My obedience my serving when the word says love your wife like christ love the church and she do something to get on your nerves and you still say baby i love you i know we i know we not i still and you still making sure you, you still serving and she and, and she done she done pissed you off and you say you know what I, I, i'm going to the store do you want anything that's worship god here's mm-hmm. worship when you, uh-oh, come here, Holy Ghost. When you forgive somebody who don't deserve it. Come on. God hears worship. That's worship. That's his, that's worship. one of his favorite worship songs. Forgiveness is one of his favorite worship songs. He'd rather hear your forgiveness than Tasha Cobbs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm being Man. real. You being it's, real, bro. It's, it's your conduct. When you when, when the word when the word says to be to be to be slow uh, to be slow to anger when the, when the word says that you're supposed when you obey the word God hears worship mm, it, is, it is it is it is it is because now I'm not even serving you with what my with my words I'm not even serving you with my acts but I'm serving you with what I do when mm. I really could go off on you but I don't and the word says be quick to hear and slow to speak God. I'm worshiping him. Mm. When I love, when again, when I love my, when I'm loving my enemies, when I, when I'm, when I'm praying for those who, when I bless those that curse me, 
can I? I got somebody. Well, she might be watching. It's fine. She'll do it. <laughs> Will you bless those that curse you? Come on. It's considered as worship. That's Come why on. hermeneutical loop to the top. That's why when Abraham was going to sacrifice, when Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, mm-hmm. it was called worship because it was obedience. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't no band, it wasn't no, it was only because I'm doing what God told me to do. And because he's been so good to me, I'm going to respond by doing what he tells me to do. And it's going to be called worship. Last point, I'm closing my laptop. Worship is a thank you. Mm. If I had to break this whole thing down, it's a thank you. Thank you. Worship That's is good. the way you express uh, you express your love to him. Wait, I say thank you me. can express it with words, you can express it with gestures, what you do, and you re- and you and you do it in conduct. When again, when you when you forgive those who talk behind your back and you and you let when you man, it is worship. It is the way you express God. See, there's certain people who I didn't I didn't snap on them because I'm just a great guy. Cause the enemy want to smack, want to snap on you, right? But me not snapping on you is because I'm expressing to God how much I love Him, Come on. and I love Him enough that I'm gonna watch my tongue to you. Going to church when you don't feel like it, you're expressing your love to God. When you got people preaching and that you can't tell me pastors want to get up and preach every Sunday. But All when right. they do it from a pure heart and they're doing it out of love of God, God sees worship. All right. That's good. All right. It's worship. It's it. When, when, again, man, when I'm stewarding well over what God has given me, God it looks at it as worship. Because I know what he gave me. I know what I'm supposed to do. And it's it is work. It is my way to express love. I love you enough to where I'm not about to do this. Mm, right. Last example. I know, like I had a cousin who was an avid smoker. He would smoke, you know, cigarettes, weed, whatever the case. But when he got in my car, he knew I didn't bang with smoke like that. Mm-hmm. So when he got in my presence, his out of his love for me, he didn't smoke in my car. It wasn't because he didn't want to smoke. It was because he loved me enough not to. Mm. So there might be some things. See, that's what we're talking about, the Holy Spirit, and again, I'm aware of his presence. Because there's certain people right now, if we, some of the grown right now, you might still cuss and you grown, but you ain't no cuss in front of your mama. Why? Because you in her presence. But when you realize that the presence of God is with you, there might be things that you want to do. See, let's, I want to free up some of the church people right now. There might be something that you want to do that you still got desire for, but out of your love for him, how will you respond? How will you express love to him? That's right. I'm done. Man. Man, if, if, if there's anything that anyone missed tonight, you you got to go back and watch it because <laughs> <laughs> this man of God just left so much out here on the table. I want to add something, um, and uh, Marcus, I actually let you let you go first before I, I, I add my last thought, and then we'll close it out. Uh, uh, like my brother said, please go back and watch this from beginning to end, and truly learn what worship is, because my brother Mark. He really uh, confirmed a lot of things of where I am at personally, Uh, because I'm just in a place where I'm responding to God in a different type of way where I don't have to force anything. There you go. There you go. I don't have to force anything at all because I'm true to this. Literally how people say I'm I'm true to God and I understand him at a different level. You know what I mean? Because mm. there was a place where I didn't understand him. 
And, and I was searching for them. And that's why I said it one time, you know, is the things change is not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. But the more you seek God and you truly go after him, one day you're not going to have to really force anything. And not that I did before, I was just hungry. I was hungry enough to get to this place. Yeah. And yeah. now it's just my natural response. So when I'm hearing things, it's just confirmation. Just It's just who I am. So I, I thank my brother for really confirming some things that, you know, worship is a lifestyle and a response. Because now I know for a fact, without, uh, without hesitation and unapologetically, I am a worshiper. Yes. I am a yes. worshiper. Yes, yes. So, I'm just, Let, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Lord. I'm grateful. Man, and I just, real quick, see that, and this last thing, because he said something that was so deep, and I, we can't, we got to go, but we can't miss this. But he's talking about the forcing it, and that's so honest. That is. It's so honest. It's so honest, because then what will happen is we'll beat ourselves up when we get into an atmosphere and the spirit will be high. And then when we don't feel the emotion, we'll feel bad. Right. Because it doesn't feel like mm -hmm. we're worshiping. Right. Or oh, what's wrong with me? How come I don't feel what everybody else is feeling? But when you respond, you respond anyway. And it's got to be authentic. Like when you worship, your worship might not look like everybody else. Come on. Right. David was out here playing a harp. Who the heck plays harps? <laughs> Facts. Right. We, we, we learn in the Bible about the, you know, about the tambourine and the, and the burn. And we learn about the symbols. But a mm -hmm. harp? And God said, oh, yeah, that's a man after my own heart. Right. It's a woman who walked into a table full of men, a room full of men, people at the table, and she take perfume, perfume, and bust it open and put it on his feet. That's weird. Right. And if she would have did that in 2021, you know what we would have said? But she doing too much. Right. Mm. Mm. God says, but this woman will be preached about wherever the gospel is preached. Right. Because she was authentically hurt. I don't got a whole bunch, but there's one box of perfume I do have. From my heart, I'm giving it to you. Perfume on feet and wiping it with your hair, that is unsanitary. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in COVID <laughs> days. She broke right. all the COVID guidelines. <laughs> but right. God received her worship so much and said she got to be preached about wherever the gospel is preached. Amen. Mm. That is so key. No matter how many people around you, if your worship looked different, that just, when you said that, man, that just, somebody in the room needed to hear that, Marcus. I need you to know that. Somebody, and I feel my Holy Ghost right now. Somebody in the room mm -hmm. needed to hear that because you've been beating yourself up because you're not feeling what other people feel when they're in church. Maybe God ain't wire you like that. Right. Right. Maybe God didn't wire your worship to sound like other people. Right. There's been so, rooms God, God God had to teach me that. God taught me that in Chicago at 12 hour prayer. Mm -hmm. when, when the spirit was real high and people was everything, God told me to sit down. Mm -hmm. And so while everybody else was jumping around, I never told you this either. Mm -hmm. But when we, was in, when we was at 12 hour prayer and everybody was jumping mm -hmm. around, because you remember the spirit got real high, people were speaking in mm -hmm. tongues, falling out. God told me to sit down and listen. So mm -hmm. I sat in my seat and I was in full worship just like this. Mm -hmm. And I sat down in the, in the midst of everybody else going in, I sat down and I did this. And that was the first time in my life where I where I was just like, wow, I could fully be in it. I could fully be in the moment, but it not look like everybody else. Right. Whew. And you got to be OK with that. OK. As long as it is authentic and it comes from your heart, because if it comes from your heart, God can receive it. OK, I'm done, TJ. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm. No, but when Marcus, when, Marcus yeah. said that, when Marcus said that, man, somebody needed to hear that because somebody on this line, man, been really beating themselves up, man. Like, I, you know, that's one of the reasons I don't go to church because I, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Like, there's one of the reasons I don't do the church like that because I, I don't be feeling it like everybody be feeling. I look over and I see I see uh, 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 Mother Smith and I look over and I see Deacon Johnson and, and, and Mother Smith and Deacon Johnson. They going in and they speaking the tongues and they, and I don't do that. You don't have to. Mm. You don't, Come on, Mark. You don't have Come to, on, Mark. Respond in the way God made you. Mm. That's it. That's it. 
Okay, I'm done. Because that you just opened up a whole other can when you did that, uh, Marcus. Go ahead, do that for me. <laughs> no, that's 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 it. And I, I'm gonna give you one more point, Marcus. I'm gonna give you one more point. Worship is a response to obedience. Yeah. Because when you look at what we just talked, what you just talked about, remember, like I, I shared it with you guys a few weeks ago when I preached, when I went to go preach, and when I had the opportunity to go preach a, 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 about a month ago, about, yeah, a month ago, well, a couple months ago. Now they were in November. And I was watching the services the nights <laughs> before I preached. And I was like, God, I don't do all of that stuff. They laying folk out. They doing this. They doing that. Mm-hmm. God said, just go on and, and be you. Right. Just go on and be you. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. I went and I bit and I was myself. And the same spirit of the Lord fell in that room. And it's just like what Mark said. It didn't take that much. It didn't take all mm-hmm. that. I didn't have mm-hmm. to become who they were. And I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, right. I didn't have to become who they were in order for God to still get the glory out of my life. Right. In order for God to still be pleased. And that's what this is all about. When you right. worship, you're worshiping out of that spirit of obedience. Yes, God, I hear you. Yes, God, I sense you. Yes, God, you are who you say you are. And because of that, I'm going to obey you. Mm-hmm. There's something that God requires out of all of us. But that and that, and it goes before sacrifices. It goes before all of these things. It's obedience. Mm-hmm. All throughout the Old Testament, what did God require? Obedience. Just obey me. Just follow me. That's all I want. Right. Just obedience. Why do people get in trouble? Because they did not obey. Right. They decided to follow up after and worship after other gods. Worship after other things. God said, "I just want you to worship me." I got all you need right here. And it's just like what you said earlier. I don't want you to worship me because you know I have all things. I want you to worship me because of who I am. Mm-hmm. Don't, look, don't look to me to worship or worship me because of what I have to give you. Because right. that's not what that's not worship. That's not pure worship. Yeah, exactly. Pure worship. And, 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 and pure worship is this. Mark chapter 12, verse 41, um, 41 to 44. I'm going to read this real quick because this dropped in my spirit when you was talking. Now, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people would put money into the treasury. And mm-hmm. many who were rich put in much. Come on. Come on. But one poor widow came and mm-hmm. threw in two mites, which Come makes on. a quadrant. Yes, sir. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Surely I say to you, this poor woman has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Yes, she did. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty gave in all that she had her whole livelihood. God wants you to give all Thank that you have. Thank you. Yes, you may have abundance of favor. Yes, you may have abundance of influence. You may have abundance of all these things. You can give a portion of that. No, God doesn't want a portion. He wants it all. Thank you, Jesus. And when you worship God in spirit and in truth, you're worshiping God out of the, out of the all that you have to give him. Because when you think back on that thing that God brought you out of, when you think back on that moment when God spared your life from something, when you think back on these instances, you're not giving God glory and praise out of the abundance of him blessing you and and, and keeping you out of that thing. No, you are giving him praise because of, of who he is and how that he was able to keep you out of all of those things, exactly. keep you from all of those things. And so that's 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 what true and pure worship is. You want to know how to worship God? Don't worship God out of your abundance. Give God your all. Correct. He knows what you have. Give Correct. God your all. And I, and I, I'm gonna say this, and then Pastor Mark, you are gonna pray us out. Yes, sir. When I preached the the thing, and I told you, I told both of you guys this. When I preached, what the feeling I had after I preached was that I said I was empty. All right. I gave everything I had. I felt empty. I sat down. I didn't even try to do anything else. I just felt empty. And I said, that was the first time I ever, after I preached, I felt empty. It felt like I gave everything I had to God in that moment. That's how you should feel when you're worship, when you're worshiping God. When, when the, when the spirit dies down during the worship service and, and everything is done and you're getting ready to sit down, you should be sitting down empty, ready to be filled with the word of God. All right. 
Pastor Mark, go ahead and pray us out so we can get off this live. Because we'll be up here. I already know. I already see it. <laughs> <laughs> I already see it, man. Holy Spirit. You're awesome. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. You're amazing, God. You are faithful. You are not a man that you shall lie, God, nor are you the son of man that you shall repent. You are a God of integrity. You're a God of faithfulness. You are a God that knows the end of a thing from the beginning. You're a God that knows the plan that he has for us. Father, we just honor you, God, and we bless you simply for who you are, God. We know you to be a way maker, God. We know you to be a healer. God, we know you to be we know you to be a, a, a deliverer, God. We know you to be our provider, God. And most of all, God, we know you to be our savior, Father. God, if it was not for you, we wouldn't even stand a chance. If it wasn't for you, we, we wouldn't even we wouldn't even be able to walk this thing out, God. So we just give you honor. We give you praise, God. And we just give you our worship, God. Father, help us to respond. Yes, <clears throat> Excuse me. No matter how uh, things are going, Father, no matter what's going on in our life, God, help us to remember that you are still good. Yes, when we're Lord. struggling, you're still good. When we're going through, you're still good. When we're struggling financially, you're still good. Stuff yes, going Lord. in our body, you are still good. People getting on our nerves, God, it is still good. It doesn't change who you are. Our circumstance doesn't change who you are. You are still worthy. You are still worth it, God. You are still deserving of all the worship, Father. And God, I pray, God, that, we would, that you would spark our memory. Father, there's anybody in this room, God, who, who needs their memory to be sparked, Father. I pray that you will spark their memory, not the yes. not the the fake version, not the edited version, God, but the real story, God. When they think about where they could be, when they think uh, about where they should be, when they think about where people said they would be, when they look at the statistics, when they look at the, the the rates, the murder rates, when they look at the jail rates, Father, and they look at the reality of where they could be, I pray, God, that they will respond because they're not there. I pray that they will respond on the bad days. I pray that they will respond when things are going rough at work. I pray that they will respond when things, when people are frustrated and God, help it not to change our response. God, our response should always be that of expressing our love to you, God. You are worthy of it. You deserve it. You are all good. And we just give your name the glory. Keep us throughout the course of the rest of this week, God, and keep us as we come back here next week to even be filled again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Man, we thank God for you, Chief Apostle Bishop Elect, Chief Worship Instructor Mark Rice, and Pastor Mark Rice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you say it when the thing comes down, though. That's the thing. Right? <laughs> it's the timing for me. <laughs> God's timing is always right. You are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Man, we thank God for you. We thank God for each and every one of you for tuning in and listening with us and being a part of this podcast. I want to let everybody know that uh, December 11th is our One Faith experience. We will be having an awesome worship, uh, awesome night of worship and intercession. I have put up our, our, our Give to One Faith cash out right here. If you were blessed by tonight's um, you know, episode, so is to see. Give us a dollar. Give us two dollars. It'll, it'll all go towards our night of worship and our night of intercession on December 11th. Uh, we we are looking to do great things in the kingdom of God that yeah. night. You know, we have some amazing men and women lined up to preach, not to preach, sorry, to pray, to intercede. I don't, I don't, I don't know what we talking about some preaching, but we to pray, to intercede, and also to, um, to, to sing and lead us into worship. Um, Mark is going to be with us that night. So if y'all want to see, the man of God himself, the chief. <laughs> let me let me put it back up here. The chief apostle, the bishop elect, and the chief worship instructor, <laughs> Mark Rice. If you want to see him, <laughs> come December 11th. Oh, you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, man, we thank God for you. We thank God for each and every one of you. Um, and we pray that you guys have a blessed week. We will be back next week. We'll see y'all later. Where's the button? There we go. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> <laughs>